بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Uh, the following verses in Surah Al-Takwir, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal proves in them to the Quraysh uh, the authenticity of the message of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaks about the message and the messengers uh, involved in, in conveying the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it starts off with an oath Allah Azza wa Jal makes. Allah says, فَلَا أُقْوَسِمُ بِالْخُنَّسِ الْجَوَارِ الْكُنَّسِ So I swear by the disappearing stars, those that run their courses fast, and set. Allah Azza wa Jal is making an oath, is swearing to indicate and prove to them as an oath is used in Arabic to prove truthfulness of what is being sworn on. Allah is swearing to prove to them the authenticity of the message and therefore resurrection will take place and therefore accountability will take forth and so on. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said Allah Azza wa Jal here is referring to the stars which disappear in the morning during daylight and then they appear to people in their course at night. And Allah Azza wa Jal is in an indirect way telling them that though you don't see these stars during the daytime, they're still running in their course, but your eyes cannot see them. Allah Azza wa Jal is in, in this illustrating his uh, control and ability, uh, his control over the, uh, the uh, stars and ability to create subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah Azza wa continues in the oath saying, وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا عَسْعَسْ And by the night, as it closes in or departs. Allah Azza wa here mentions the night after mentioning the stars because at night people use the light of the sun, the daylight. And the Arabs in particular use the stars to find their ways in the desert. There were guides for them, and they were specialized in finding their path by means of the stars. So Allah Azza wa Jal again is addressing them using things that they relate to, they understand, they benefit from. And Allah Azza wa Jal is telling them that I blessed you with these stars during this dark nights or these dark nights to find your paths. So Allah Azza wa Jal is telling them, you have no control over these the alternation of the day and the night. The night comes in and disappears by the uh, rising of the sun. The stars go into their uh, orbits and they disappear during the day for you, though they are on their paths. But I am the one who is in control. وَالصُّبْحِ إِذَا تَنَفَّسْ And by the dawn, when it breathes. The, the, uh, this verse is, is talking about the, the moment the light uh, appears as dawn breaks out. Uh, it gradually starts coming out, the light of the day, uh, until it is a complete uh, daylight. Now, this beautiful description in the oath uh, of the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, this beautiful movement of the sun, uh, the alternation of the day and the night, light and darkness, stars that uh, run, set and appear, disappear and appear, uh, again, are all indications given to people uh, about the ability of Allah Azza wa Jal to create and therefore the ability to resurrect. 
Now, this introduction, this oath, these four verses, they pave the way uh, so that people's minds and souls accept what is being sworn on. Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by something, by the stars and then by the moon and by, and, uh, uh, and by the daylight or dawn. What is being sworn on? Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing that the following is true. What is it? إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ That I swear by all of these that indeed it, referring to the Qur'an, is a word conveyed by a noble messenger, referring to Jibreel Allah Azza wa Jal, after describing the events of the hereafter, uh, swore that this message that is being conveyed to you O oh people, was sent down through a noble messenger, Jibreel, to a noble human messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Jibreel, Allah Azza wa Jal is telling them, he is noble, he is only conveying, and his nobility is that he is conveying the words of Allah Azza wa Jal to the messengers. And since he's noble, noble people don't lie. They say the truth. Again, Allah Azza wa Jal here is defending the uh, method or means of delivering the message, meaning the messenger, the angel messenger, and therefore defending the authenticity of the message itself. Then Allah Azza wa Jal describes this messenger. The quwwatin inda dil arshi makin. Endured, endued with strength, with a high rank, with the owner of the throne, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal described Jibreel in a, in a different verse in the Quran, uh, saying, Allamahu shadeedul quwa, referring to uh, Jibreel when he taught Muhammad وسلم, the Qur'an, when he conveyed to him the Qur'an, Allah Azza wa Jal said, the one who taught him was uh, intense in strength and sound in appearance. Ibn al-Qayyim, when he spoke about the strength of Jibreel alayhi salam, he said, just to show the extent of his strength, it is enough to know that on one of his wings, while well, he has 600, as the Prophet ﷺ described, on one of his wings, he lifted the villages of the people of Lut until they reached the heavens, and then they flipped them over. And then he flipped them over. This is uh, an indication of the strength Allah Azza wa Jal uh, is talking about. Then Allah Azza wa Jal goes further to uh, describe Jibreel. Muta'in thamma ameen. Obeyed there in the heavens. Thamma means there in the heavens. And trustworthy. Ibn al-Qayyim says that angels obey Jibreel alayhi salam. In the book of Al-Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he was talking about the journey uh, of Al-Isra and Al-Mi'raj, he said when he ascended, to the heavens, he said, Jibreel took me by hand and he ascended to the heavens of the dunya, the first one, right? He said, and then Jibreel said to the keeper of that heaven, open. The keeper said, who is this? He said, Jibreel. So he obeyed and opened. So Ibn Qayyim said, he, Jibreel that is, spoke or addressed that keeper, that angel, in a command form. He gave him instructions and he immediately uh, obeyed. Jibreel is entrusted with the uh, message of Allah Azza wa Jal, not only to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but rather to, to other messengers or to all messengers. In the story when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received uh, the, the uh, initial revelations and he came back terrified to Khadija radiallahu anha she, she took him to her cousin Warqa ibn Nawfal right who was from the people of the book and 
she told him to listen to Muhammad sallallahu and when the Prophet sallallahu told Waraqa what he had experienced, he said, إِنَّهُنَّا مُوسُ الْأَكْبَرُ الَّذِي نَزَلَ عَلَى مُوسَى He said, this is the Namus. Namus in Arabic means the keeper of secrets, referring to the angel. He said, this is the same angel that went down, was sent down to Musa alayhi uh, salatu wasalam, and this is uh, reported by Al-Bukhari uh, and Muslim. What is meant here is to refute the lies of the Quraysh that what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was saying was nothing but something from the shaytan, from the devil who taught him what to say. And Allah Azza wa Jal described Jibreel with these two qualities in particular, strength, because this task requires strength to bear, to shoulder this responsibility. And it takes trustworthiness and nobility to convey it as it is without alteration. So these qualities of the angel messenger reflect the lofty rank of the message because Allah Azza wa Jal allocated this task to the best of all messengers, angel messengers, which is Jibreel, to the best of all human messengers, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah Azza wa Jal starts giving the description or the, the speech turns to speak about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, وَمَا صَاحِبُكُمْ بِمَجْنُونَ After speaking about the angel messenger, now Allah is talking about the human messenger who's conveying that message, Al-Quran, the word of Allah. And your companion, and there is a great wisdom behind the usage of the word companion, referring to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is not at all mad, he's not insane. Allah Azza wa Jal uh, is saying, your companion. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam revealed, uh, received revelation at a very old age. He wasn't a teenager or a, or a youngster. He received the message at the age of 40. So Quraysh lived with him all these years, decades. And Allah Azza wa Jal is telling them, he's your companion, you know him, you've known him for such a long period, and you know that he is not as you describe him to be. He is your companion, you do not, you're not unaware of his qualities and merits. You know he is called amongst you, As-Sadiqul Amin, the truthful and trustworthy. So it's not befitting to call him a liar, a magician, while you know he is your companion and you know him. Again, by this Allah Azza wa Jal is defending the second means of conveying the message, which is the human messenger. In turn, Allah Azza wa Jal is defending the authenticity or substantiating for the authenticity of the message the Quran. So, this oath that Allah Azza wa Jal uh, gave is related to the revelation in three ways. Number one, the one who conveyed it from the angels, which is Jibreel, his strength and his trustworthiness. Number two, the one who received it and is conveying it as a human being, who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is trustworthy and truthful. And the Quran itself, who in its style was miraculous in telling them about things that happened in the past was miraculous who told them about things that will place and will take place and some took place during their time is also miraculous and then allah azza wa jal further refutes the lies and false accusations of Quraysh. وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ بِالْأُفُقِ الْمُبِينَ Allah is talking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he saw Jibreel alayhi salam. Allah says, and he, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has already seen him, referring to Jibreel, 
in the clear horizon. Qatada, may Allah have mercy on him, he said, the Prophet ﷺ saw him from the uh, side where the sun rises, from the east, where it is the clearest to the vision. So no one can claim that it was blurry and he couldn't see and therefore accuse him of seeing the devil instead of seeing the angel. The Prophet ﷺ informed that he's seen Jibreel in his actual form uh, and he had 600 wings and he said when he appeared he blocked the horizon what a magnificent creation of Allah subhanallah and then Allah goes to say about Muhammad وَمَا هُوَ عَلَى الْغَيْبِ بِضَنِينَ and he, Muhammad sallallahu is not a withholder of knowledge of the unseen. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu narrates, and this is reported by Imam Ahmed and classified as authentic by Al-Albani, that the Prophet sallallahu said, there is nothing that can bring you closer to Allah, uh, to astaghfirullah, there is nothing that can bring you closer to Jannah and uh, keep you away from fire, except that I have clarified for you. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu said, there is not a bird that flies in the sky except that the Prophet sallallahu informed this knowledge about it. So the Prophet sallallahu did not withhold any knowledge of the message from Allah azza wa وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ and it, the Qur'an that is, is not the word of a devil expelled from the heavens or accursed. So Allah Azza wa here swore by beautiful things from His creation to prepare the hearts to receive the oath and that this message is from the creator of these beautiful things that you see and enjoy and benefit from. And then he spoke to them about the wahi, the revelation, and the conveyors of the revelation from the angel and the human messengers. And then Allah refutes the false claims of Quraysh that it is something that the devil taught Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling them that a message that speaks about such creation, such beauty, such a creator cannot be something said by an accursed devil. And then Allah Azza wa Jal asks the Quraysh uh, with condemnation, فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ So, where are you going? Where are you going straying away from the path by falsely accusing Muhammad wasallam of lying and being a magician or accusing the Qur'an to be words from the shaytan or accusing Jibreel the conveyor from Allah to be the devil. Allah Azza wa Jal is, is asking them this and in, 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 in Arabic this is a way to attract people's attention to the answer of the question more than the question itself so Allah Azza wa Jal is condemning the false statements of Quraysh and this is a form of uh, condemnation or condemnation from Allah Azza wa Jal to the Quraysh regarding their false uh, accusation. In huwa illa dhikrul It is not except a reminder to the worlds. One thing very interesting here, a reminder. People usually remind one another, one another with something that took place. Isn't it? Do you remember this and that? But the hereafter didn't come yet. 
So it is as if Allah Azza wa had brought the future to the past out of His mercy to remind us with it as if it is something that already took place. As He says in the Quran, Ata Amrullah, talking about the future, talking about the hereafter, talking about the day of resurrection. Allah said, The command of Allah has already come. It hasn't. But the Arabs use this to indicate nearness of the event. It has already happened. It has already come. So Allah Azza wa Jalla is talking about it as if it actually has already happened. And He is reminding us with it so we take heed. And this is a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jalla. لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَقِيمُ For whoever wills among you to take a right course. This is when Abu Jahl said we were given the choice for whoever wills. But this is not, not actually the case. Allah Azza wa is warning them not to take the path. Allah is warning not to take the right path, not to accept the message, not to accept Muhammad as a truthful and trustworthy, and that the message is from the Creator. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ And you will not will accept that which Allah wills, the Lord of the worlds. Uh, there is a very important issue here about human's will versus the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's a, it's a very clear yet can be confusing to some people. Uh, and let me simplify it in the following manner. Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator. And he created mankind for a purpose, to fulfill servitude, to worship Him. And He sent messengers and messages to clarify the path so no one will have an excuse of being unaware of what's right and what's wrong, what's guidance and what's misguidance. And He showed them these two paths and He showed them the means to Maintain yourself on, these, on the right path and what uh, you will lose by not maintaining yourself, which is deviating, right? All of that has been, been clarified. All, all of that has been detailed. So, when someone does something, he does it willingly. So Allah Azza wa Jal gave us that free will to decide whether to go this way or to go this way. Clear so far. However, Allah's knowledge is comprehensive, all-encompassing. And so is His wisdom, it's ultimate. With His knowledge, he knew that this person will do this and that person will do that and therefore facilitated for those who were guided means of guidance and those whom he knew will reject by their own will. He subhanahu wa ta'ala deprived them from the means of guidance. This is because Allah Azza wa Jal is just Allah is fair. Allah will not punish someone for failing the test based on his knowledge. He will punish people based on their own will and choice that they made. One might say, like the companions, then why should we exert an effort? The Prophet ﷺ said, exert the effort. Each will be facilitated to his destiny, to his fate. If you come to someone and say, who 
takes the excuse of things have been predestined already by Allah. It's the will of Allah, so why should we do anything? If you go and tell him, since Allah Azza wa Jal, in your argument, uh, or if the case is as you describe, then why should you eat? If you're hungry, then you should wait to see what Allah Azza wa Jal had predestined, whether you're going to starve to death or find a means. He will facilitate the means for you to get food. So you just need to sit still until this happens. No one would accept that. You want money. No one would accept the argument of you telling him, stay at home. If it's meant to be, then you'll get the money. If it's not, then you won't. No one would accept that. Then why do we not accept that when it comes to the obedience of Allah? Why do we take that as an excuse? No, you have to exert effort. Allah told us to utilize the means and exert efforts to get the provision. The argument of Allah Azza wa Jal telling us or instructing us to utilize means is a sound argument, but it applies to everything. Not just when we want money or we want children. Tell someone, don't get married. Allah, if Allah had decreed that you will get a child, you'll get a child. He'll make a way for you to get a child. He won't accept that. One of the beautiful statements, I think it was uh, said by Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, answering these people. He said, if someone argues with you based on the decree of Allah and everything is predestined, slap him on the face. And if he uh, is, becomes angry, tell him it's been predestined by Allah, so don't argue with the decree of Allah. Uh, with this, we conclude uh, Surah Al Taqweer and we'll conclude this session. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka, atubu